In this video, you can see that Alex is holding a pacemaker box. The power button is up top. To figure out what mode you are in, you can check out the letters to the left bottom. In this case, it's AAI. You have a heart rate, 94 in this case, and then you have your milliamps. In this case, this is a milliamps for the atrial wire. The monitor shows us that he is being paced at 100%. We know that the pacing spike occurs before the P wave um, at every beat. One thing to highlight from the start is that there is an emergency button up top. It's the red button in the case you need to use it to emergently pace. There is a pause button at the bottom here, but we are going to go through underlying rhythm check. So before we do that, we need to make sure that the patient is stable. So after you've ensured that the patient is stable enough, we are going to check the underlying rhythm. First, we need to unlock the box. You're going to press and hold until the lock disappears. To check the underlying rhythm, you will slowly decrease the pacemaker rate until the underlying rhythm emerges. Watching the monitor, you're looking for a loss of capture. You're looking for the pacer spikes to disappear. Here you see that the patient has converted into a sinus rhythm rather than a paced rhythm. That is the patient's underlying rhythm. He's now at a sinus rhythm of 71. You do not wanna go below a heart rate of less than 50 um, if the patient becomes symptomatic, please return the previous pacemaker mode and rate. The next step is the stimulation threshold. You want to set the pacemaker at a rate 10 above the patient's intrinsic rate. In this case, his heart rate is 72, so we will go up to a heart rate of 82. We're going to decrease the milliamps by turning the output counterclockwise until you lose capture. At this point, you are looking at the monitor and noticing when the pacer spikes no longer appear or they begin to drop beats. Alex has placed it at eight and you can see there's some dropped beats. You no longer see a consistent spike before every P wave. So at this point, you're going to increase the milliamps by turning clockwise until you get capture and you have another instance where you have a 100% paced rhythm. This will be your stimulation threshold. Currently the pacer box is at 10 milliamps. This is the threshold. You will set the milliamp output to two times greater than the stimulation. In this case, it will be up to 20. You want to now restore the heart rate to the previous setting. Our previous setting was at 94. Next will be your sensing threshold. You will set the rate at least 10 below the patient's intrinsic rate. Remember when we looked at the underlying rhythm, it was at about 72. So we will come down to a heart rate of 62 on the pacemaker box. At this point, we will adjust the output, setting the output to 0.1 milliamps. Highlight sensitivity. Sensitivity is in the box below. And notice the sensing light flashing rather than the pace light. At this point, you will highlight sensitivity, decrease it by slowly dialing counterclockwise while watching to see when the pace light begins to flash. Watch 
for when the pace light up top, the light green, is flashing. This will be your sensitivity threshold. It is currently at three millivolts. To set your threshold value, you will cut that in half. In this case, it will be 1.5. In this case, it is 1.5, but there, there's only a 1.4 setting, and this will be adequate for your sensitivity threshold value. Now that we have identified our threshold values for capture as well as sensitivity, we will go ahead and set the pacemaker box at those levels. The heart rate was to be set at 94 with a milliamp setting of 20. And the sensitivity will remain at 1.4 millivolts. This completes your threshold check for sensitivity and capture.